Morning, Zom Park. Good morning, Zom Park, and welcome to season four. Season four. Season four of GMZ. GMZ episode one of season four. How we got to season four, nobody knows. But here we are. I mean, we're still, way. we're still, we've got to season four, and still nobody's listening. But you know, it's fine. It's all cool. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it, it's good. There's, you know, there's half a dozen, you know regular listeners who die hard in. fans die hard fans that some have no eardrums are, some of them are just dead fans now they're they're the walking dead fans who just you know they're just the you know like um oh you, you know like how zombies they go back to shopping centers and they just sort of wander around like because that's what they used to do um, that's what that, they do with podcasts the, the people still doing that with podcasts but they're, they're like why am i still listening to this shit but yet yeah, they are so we have a hardcore group a hardcore following um talking of a hardcore following i don't um, want to hear the next bit of this sentence <laughs> uh, no i was i was, was going to talk about our group because uh, um you know a lot of what happens in good mornings on pock is because of our facebook group isn't it we have it a is. facebook group it has over 700 people it, it it's varied in numbers it's got close to a thousand and it's dropped back down due to the the facebook call when they got rid of all the robots so um you know we're, we're down to 700 more members um but a lot of what happens for GMZ happens in there. So if you're not getting your GMZ fix on the podcast because we've had a bit of a break, then you can always go there. You know, there's yeah. um, there's and we talk there too. We do, yeah. We're just always, you know, we're doing stuff and competitions. And it doesn't sound it. like either of us are dying when yeah, it's true. Online, because we're, uh, the reason we haven't been here is because first of all, I died and then was resurrected, and then I died again and was resurrected. And, yeah. and you you are currently in the process of dying. Yes, um, I am in the process of dying, but I have more of a penis than you, so I am manning the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you <should I> see. <laughs> You took the penis in vain, and that is how you have been smited from above. <laughs> because I took the penis in vain. We, everybody knows God has a penis, and God said, you take my penis in vain, and I will smite you with the lurgy. And he smited you. Because um, yeah. I took the penis in vain. How does one take a penis in vain? I'm not too sure how, how, I, how I've done that. How have I managed I, that? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, anyway, so this is episode one of season four. Um, and Beth- oh, We're mixing things up a bit, aren't we? We're going to mix things up. We're going to do less interviews this season. So um, to all those people who are emailing me saying, can we have an interview? Um, maybe, this is maybe why. not. But there's not going to be a lot. I can tell you that when we do. We just podcast. find it very stressful, don't we? Having to, because we both work, we've both got pretty full-time jobs and full-time families. And then trying to kind of coordinate interviews when we're both free is just starting to become a little bit stressful. Yeah, and, and ju- I, you know, no disrespect to any of our interview guests because I've enjoyed them immensely, um, but we have covered every topic there is to cover yeah. when it comes to zombie books. Um, so, you know, if we get another zombie actor or another zombie director, then maybe we'll have an interview. But in terms of zombie authors... Um, Unless probably... someone comes out with like a really new and exciting yeah. topic, yeah. maybe. Yeah, exactly. But at the moment, it's been done to death. So there's there's unlikely to be, you know, never say never because, you know, you, we're likely to flip flop on that at some point. But at the moment, we have no plans for guests. Um, so now so we're going to do what we tend to do best, which yeah. is fuck around on the Internet. <laughs> So, but we 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 get, you know we're keeping within the topic of zombies because that's the Good Morning on Pop thing. But yes. so, what are we doing, Bex? What what's the plan for season four? So we're just going to have general chats around topics that are zombie related. Now, if you have listened to the podcast before, and the, the six people who are probably listening probably have listened to the podcast before. Again, why are you still listening? Um, our topics tend to, well, our chats, more than anything, tend to get off topic very, very quickly. So we'll end up talking about zombie, uh, a zombie topic and then suddenly we'll be talking about dildos. So I, I, I don't hold out much hope for us, really. No. Um, but, you know, we're going to start off with the main topic. So this, this, it, you know, I'm just going to jump straight into it before we get, you know, we, we, we rattle on about, about a, a, you know, a 15 minute intro, which nobody really wants. Um, the, the first topic tonight I think we need some sort of topic music. I'll add it afterwards. Bing, 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 bong. Something like that. Your intro music was far more exciting than mine. I know, right? Uh, we're, we're keeping yours. Um, and the topic is, can you defend your home against zombies? Um, it's a fairly simple one. Can you defend your home against zombies? Um, well, Bex, 
Can you defend your home against zombies? Me personally, probably not because I have zero skills when it comes to things like this. Um, Mm. But I have been doing a little bit of research and I think preparation pre-zombie apocalypse is key. Yeah. Right. So, In which way? In which way? So first of all, I think you basically need to learn how to defend your home against zombie apocalypse. And I found a website that basically lists what you can study at university to yeah. make you more prepared for the zombie po- apocalypse. So it's things like um, agriculture, applied sciences, architecture, mm. botany. And yeah. I'm just thinking there's got to be some kind of building on here. I've not really flicked through the list. Communication. I'm not sure that's... I don't really think I need to communicate in the zombie apocalypse. I'm not going to go and study that. To be fair, um, that would be one of the big bonuses, won't it? To, to ha- actually not have to communicate with other yeah. people. Yeah. That'll be, that'll be, I think that's an upside as opposed to a necessity. You know, I think that, I mean, the, the, you know, the movie, The Quiet Place, that's like my dream thing. You know, just no yeah, one says just, anything. Nobody says anything to me at all. That's fine. Mm. But things like mechanical engineering, building, plumbing you know things like that things that are actually going to be good skills to help you survive the zombie apocalypse in the future yeah but again how you you have to go to university for these things you have to pass a course and then you have to put these things into motion but like i said preparation's key are you Um, you suggesting that we should somehow take a postgraduate course in surviving the zombie apocalypse i think there should be a postgraduate course in surviving the zombie apocalypse (laughs) (laughs) i'm 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 not gonna lie bex that does seem a little a little bit extreme um i mean you know uh, i guess i guess you know the half dozen listeners we have probably believe that a zombie apocalypse is on its way you know that some of them may believe the earth is flat and that vaccines are bad but it's you know that people may believe that and uh, and that's fine, but I'm not sure they're going to go to the extremes of going of to actually, university. Of going to university, but if you happen to have gone to university anyway to su- study one of those topics, then you could be a key player within the survival group. I think that's you know that's it, it, maybe if you, if there is a zombie apocalypse, you drive to your closest university and just start bundling your car full of students and just say, what do yeah. you study? Oh, computer science. Right, fuck off. You can get eaten. What do you yeah, study? Yeah, we don't need that. Media studies. Fuck off. You can stay there. <laughs> you know? And just get the useful ones and just, you know, kidnap them. See, now I found another solution because if you don't want to go to university or you're a bit thick and can't study things like that, mm. you can pay for somebody to do these things for you pre-zombie apocalypse. Right. What do you mean to, to get fake degrees? Because that's not going to help. No, not a fake degree, you dickhead. I mean, like, installing, like, metal doors. You know, yes. big, fuck-off steel doors. Yeah, I mean... Because that's going to stop the zombies. Doors were great. I mean, do you, obviously, in the early zombie films, doors were the answer, weren't they? I mean, Night of the yeah. Living Dead, the, the door solved all. You know, the door... Exactly. <laughs> you know, oh, there's zombies outside. Oh, just shut the door. We're good. You know, we're yeah. good to go. Um, but I think so... even even like the runners, you know, kind of like the newer zombies that just run the fuck at things and like belt through it. Mm. If you've got a steel door, yeah. they ain't going to do that. They're just going to smash the red to mush. And that that's good common sense anyway, regardless yeah. of the zombie apocalypse, to have good secure doors, triple locked, you know, um, bolted at top and bottom. You can buy those special devices that they sell in the US for, you know, when they have an emergency scenario where you can just clip them onto the door and the door becomes sort of, you know, you can't force your way in. So, yeah. you know, there is, you know, basic safety principles that you could apply to doors quite easily. And we could all do that if, if we could be asked, you know. Yeah, like I said, I mean, if you really think the zombie apocalypse is going to happen in a few weeks, you you might have to pay someone to come and do this for you. Mm. But things like, you know, bulletproof glass, like tempered glass. Mm. I was going to say tempered glass. Yeah, that was my next one. Yeah, The zombies can smack at it all day long, but it's not going to... Yeah. And, and, you know, there's there's a precedent for this and there's a, you know, a good reasoning behind the tempered glass. Remember Shaun of the Dead, the Mm -hmm. pub? Remember, you know, Dylan Moran's character, David? Yep. Windows smashed. He Straight gets dragged up, through and he's got to get eaten. Guts got eaten. Um, you know, I watched that and I thought, well, if I had tempered glass, it wouldn't be a problem, would it? Um, no. So, I'm, I'm not, I, do you know, what are the strengths of tempered glass? How many zombies, you know, would, would force their way in? I guess the frame would fall in, given the certain quantity. Um, yeah. I, I don't know the strengths. You'd have to buy the right strengths with a bulletproof glass. Well, that's um, it. I mean, the glass is only as, as strong as the, the supporting 
Mm. Beams, really, isn't it? So if your beams are all rotted, then it's probably not going to do any good anyway. What about what about electric fences? Um, worked in Land of the Dead, electric it did. fence. did. <clears throat> it was about 12 foot high, I think, 10, 12 foot high. Great big fence, electrified. I know you probably, you, you could have the fence now, but I think it's probably a health and safety risk to electrify it. You know, without... <laughs> Imagine like little girls just riding past on a bike. Yeah, and... <laughs> you, you might, you might, you know, the council might be sending you some sternly worded letters. Um, especially my council, they'll be most upset if I put up an electric fence. But the... Um, the, the the you know it's something you could do you could put a you know but you could a, like hook it up couldn't you and just yeah. not turn it on until not turn it on the yeah. pack and then you could just turn it on as soon as you need to I think that's quite a good idea so I think the electric fence is good have you got anything else well the thing is all of this like I said it has to be done pre zombie apocalypse so that's you, you have to be kind of prepared for it because if you start messing around with steel doors building massive fences you know replacing all the glass in your house after the zombie apocalypse has happened yeah. you're gonna have so many zombies at your door and then yeah. it doesn't matter how well protected your house is you're not going to be able to get the fuck out of it to get some food that's true that's true but there is something you could do mm-hmm. post zombie apocalypse i know all that other stuff is pre-zombie apocalypse that's preparation but there are some things you could do post and that's you could destroy your own stairs so you could you know you could rip out your own stairs live sort of you know second floor up so you can live on your second floor in the um, attic you can live on the roof you could go building to building roof to roof but if you destroyed your downstairs stairs there's no way for anybody to get upstairs yeah again though you're gonna draw a lot of zombies though and if they all start falling over themselves they're gonna they're gonna build up oh yeah you're you're thinking piling up i'm thinking piling up world war z fashion i feel Um, like the the biggest defense that you can have against the zombie apocalypse is being quiet yes so yeah i I agree sort of um will smith i am legend sort of low profile peeking out of windows being a peeper rather than right yeah but yeah i'm a good peeper i can peep um and then i could peep at them and they won't be able to peep at me um and so i think that's a good idea i was watching a program about castles the other day and they used to set up their 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 you know their arrow slits at certain Mm -hmm. angles so they could see out but they no one could see in you know so that was just a case of you know making the windows at certain angles so they could they could have a 180 degree field of vision but no one could see in you know so that you know a low profile being able to look but not be seen that's a good idea and and being quiet like you said i think is a very good idea um there's other things that you could consider obviously um weapons are going to be essential um, we're not big on the old firearms in the UK, are we? We're no. not, you know, we don't do that. But we um, we do have plentiful supply of, you know, sort of, you know, garden tools, don't we? Look at that firearms. That equals noise, and that equals more zombies. It does. It does. But I mean, I, you know, given a choice of, um, you know, a gun or you know a hammer i would probably take the gun to be fair but I, you know that you're not going to find them easily in the uk no. um unless you, unless know you kind of hang around salford yeah but i mean unless you know where guns can be found there's no point even attempting it but you know you can go into your shed you could pick up a you know a, a shovel um you know a nice good quality shovel a pickaxe some good hammers you've got you know you've got some ready-made weapons and if, you know if you're if you plan ahead you can make sure that they're in an accessible area secured mm-hmm. and locked away ready for your own personal use um again don't look unusual if you're driving around with them in the back of the car you know if nope. you've if you've got those sort of things in the boot of the car with some gaffer tape and some cable ties, the police hardly notice when they stop you. Um, and then the other thing to consider is water. Where are you going to get water from? That's, that's a big thing. Well, that's it. You have to kind of presume that everyone's dead. Yeah. And well, that the, the water's going to be contaminated. That is the issue, isn't it? Contaminated water. If the, you know, If dead people fall into the water, you're going to get disease. I mean, I live in Manchester. It rains pretty much 93% of the year. I'm going to be yeah. all right. Yeah, but I mean, you've got to have some way of filtering it and make it healthy. So you could. Nah, you, rainwater's fine. Night runs a bit of acid. 
you can sort of, you know, you can buy these water filtration systems. You can even buy those straws that filter the water. I know they have a lifespan, but you could buy those. You can stock you can buy up tablets with... and stuff, can't you as well? Yeah, the tablets and stuff. Even Milton, you know, the Milton you use to clean baby stuff. That, yeah, that yeah. works to, 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 to filter water. You can obviously stock up on bottled water. I always keep stock of bottled water here just in case. Um, so there's, you know, there, there are lots of things you can do to defend your home against the zombies. But, but again, it's all, it's all pre. It's all pre. It all needs to be pre zompock doesn't it? But. For the best survival. <laughs> The best way to survive a zombie apocalypse is to prepare in advance. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes, it is. And not only prepare all the things we just said, doors, windows, electric fences, stairs, weapons, water, all those, you know, the staple things that you think of. Um, oh, by the way, sorry, just out of the, the side of my brain there. Have mm-hmm. you have you got a bag? Do you keep a bag? Um, no, I don't actually. No. I haven't really got anywhere to put a bag. I've got a very small house. I keep one in the boot of my car. Um, and this is this is a new thing for me over the last two three years since doing the Zompok thing. I actually keep a bag in the back of my car that's got some essentials in it. It's got a whole bunch of first aid kits. It's got some water filtration things in there, and it's got. So no, I actually keep that in the boot of the car at all times. See, Simon has a lot of shit in the boot of his car, but mm. none of it would be useful in the zombie apocalypse. In fact, actually, do he has these like out of date, um, like energy shot drinks? They'd be yeah. pretty useful. Yeah. Um, yeah, even if there's some oil in there, I think. Yet. Yeah, yeah. So you'll be fine if someone gets indigestion or something. You've got. Yeah. yeah. So you'll be all good. Um, yeah. So what I was going to say was, we were saying about a low profile, being quiet, which is obviously a good idea. So the ideal place would be somewhere secure, somewhere that's low profile and quiet. Um, somewhere where you can you're not going to get bored because you know the zombie apocalypse is going to be boring isn't it oh it's going to be boring as fuck so my suggestion would be this either in your attic or your loft or in your basement if you have one or in a secure outer building why not build a bar ah you know, you're a really good idea. I like that idea. Because you, what you don't want to do, you don't want to get to the zombie apocalypse. You're there with six, seven other people and you're at each other's throats because it's boring. There's no TV. The Wi-Fi's down. Um, why not get pissed? Why not have a drink, be in a bar, play some cards, maybe some darts, you know, quiet sports, maybe some dominoes, something like that. It sounds it sounds amazing. Have some crisps or something, you know, um, some pork scratchings. <laughs> some pork scratchings, some mini yeah, cheddars. Some mini cheddars. <laughs> And, you know, just genuinely enjoy the zombie apocalypse. Um, so I, I was looking on the internet, Bex, mm-hmm. and I thought, what would happen in real life, not in um, fiction or in the movies or in a book, what would happen in real life if a zombie apocalypse happened? And I came across a story, and it's quite sad, but I'm going to laugh at it because... Because you know, <laughs> we laugh at everything. Yeah. There was a man, I think it was mm-hmm. last year or maybe the year before, a man on crystal meth... Yeah. Who, who watched 36 hours of The Walking Dead. Whilst, 36 hours? Whilst on the crystal meth. Um, and then he went and shot 31 people, killing 12 of them. Um, Jesus. Yeah. He thought there was a real zombie apocalypse. And do you know what his words were while he was walking down the middle of the road shooting indiscriminately? He said... <laughs> he was walking down the street screaming, You don't have my... You won't have my brains, you bastards. <laughs> yeah. You're not getting my brains. <laughs> He's probably not got any. They're all being fucking disintegrated by crystal meth. By crystal meth. So, yeah, I mean, so that's that's what would happen for a lot of people in the US anyway. You know, if, if the zombie apocalypse happened. I mean, he shot 31 people in a matter of minutes. Um, so I, I'm not sure zombies would last very long in the US, to be fair. Because, you know, if, if, if all these Americans leave their houses and start shooting, there's there's not going to be a lot of alive people left or even dead people left. It's going to No, be no, they'll different. just shoot anything that runs, I reckon. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it'll be pretty good over there. You'll be good. Um, is there any other stories that you found on the Tinternets this week, Beck? That, um... I mean, while I was kind of browsing, I was just like generally looking around. I found a story from last year mm. and it was, I don't know if you heard about it. I think it was actually in, in the news in Britain. Mm. Basically, there was a power outage in uh, Florida. Yeah. And all the, the consumers obviously had like mobile numbers linked with the, um, with the, the electricity company that went down. Mm. And then the electricity company actually text all these residents and said something along the lines of, 
um, power outage and zombie alert for residents of Lake Worth and Terminus. Fuck. So they sent out a text message saying that there was <laughs> there was zombie activity. <laughs> there was zombie activity. Oh, God, so I bet, like you know, the kind of eight thousand people who have the cust- who are the customers of this yeah. <laughs> this electricity company were like fucking zombie activity. Yeah. Did they go? Did they go? What was it like? You remember when they did the HG Wells radio thing with the War of the Worlds and the Americans went nuts and went out looking for the aliens? Was it like that? Were Americans driving around looking for them? Well, I mean, it didn't. It didn't really say in this article what actually happened. Like, did everyone mm. just suddenly go mental? Did everyone start grabbing guns and water yeah. and food and like piling into cars? I mean, all it really said was that they sent another text message out saying that there was no actual zombie activity, <laughs> which is a bit boring, really, at the end of it. Yeah, it, it, can you imagine you're you're like stockpiling. You know, you're like. Um, a tackleberry from police academy getting all the guns out of the cupboard loading yourself up i'm ready I'm yeah ready you know, you're driving bar. to get your kids and you're yeah you know you're running people down in the street and... load up the pickup boys we're going to get these zombies <laughs> and then um <laughs> and then like 10 minutes later you get another, another text, text saying there is no zombie activity we apologize yeah and the dad's turning around to the going on I, I knew that i was just i was you know i was just playing it was a game ha 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 go back into the house kids yeah that sort of I thing. mean, so it actually, it also said after after this this power outage and zombie alert, mm. it followed it up with another text after they sent the retraction text. Uh, mm. Sorry, before they sent the, the retraction text, and it actually said, and I'm quoting this now, there are now far less than seven thousand three hundred and eighty customers involved due to extreme zombie activity. Wow. Restoration time uncertain. What? Restoration uncertain. <laughs> so you're thinking in your mind, there's like nearly eight thousand zombies. And you're not sure, you know, whether they, whether they mean like they're gonna reanimate. Is that what they mean by re- restoration time? I don't know. Are they gonna? Re- I, yeah, are they, are they gonna restore things to normal after the zombie activity? Can, I'm not too sure. How can you get the wording so wrong? Surely there's some youth training scheme kid who's, you know, 15 years old who's who's, who's working the night shift at this power company, smoking too much of the weed. And someone says, yeah, send that text out about the power outage. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to fuck with you lot. Well, I don't uh, know if it's that or whether it's, I mean, I was thinking it was maybe a, like a pre, a a pre recorded message, like a pre recorded message, but for text messaging. Yeah. Like a template and they just sent it out. Yeah. But why would they need to have a zombie warning on it unless they know. know something that we don't know? I, do you know what I was? Uh, I'm I'm not a conspiracy theorist, like I said, but I've started to become one more recently, right? Same. Be- you say, oh, good, good. Glad it's not just me, because you've got things like that happen with the zombie apocalypse text, right? Yeah, and why would they have a pre, would, pre, would they pre-made have up it? message with a zombie apocalypse warning on it? I, Donald Trump is obviously not a real person, right? <laughs> I, uh, no. I don't care what anybody says. He's a cartoon character. The Simpsons made it's him some up. kind of plasticine model. Yeah. So they, they've got this guy, right? They've got this puppet, and the the and he's declared a state of emergency, and he's building an eight billion dollar wall, right? An eight billion dollar. Just think about that number of how big that wall is. That's and like, he's declared this emergency, so he gets money for this wall. Let's just yeah, and and, and it's like the Great Wall of China. Is that sort of cost that you're looking at? Yeah. So, the, what would be the purpose of the wall? What's the purpose of the emergency? Um, and, and zombies. It, zombie, it does baffle. I mean, I'm not one for a conspiracy, but I do, I do feel that we are being lied to or being misled in some way. There's more to what's happening in the world than we understand. Um, and whether or not it's a fear of not necessarily zombies, but maybe disease, you know, because, you know, virulent strains of disease that are becoming, um, you know, uh, immune to antibiotics and stuff. Maybe that this this is known and it's not something that you want to necessarily spread panic with, but it, people are aware of it. Um, so I'm starting to think in the back of my mind that maybe there is actually more to what's going on in the world than we're actually seeing. Oh, of course there is. They just oh. don't want us to see it. Good. Is this going to become a conspiracy podcast? Because they're far more popular. They're so much more fun as well. <laughs> we can branch out so much more into conspiracy theories. I watched a program about flat earthers the other day, and it was incredible. Um, incredible as in you now believe the earth is flat, or incredible no, not that at people all. can be that stupid? The second one. Okay. Uh, so I was sitting there watching it, and it was amazing how stupid these people are. 
but my wife got so angry, so angry at the TV. She had to I leave the really room. I get really angry. She was screaming at the TV, how are these people this stupid? And I'm going, it's brilliant that they're this stupid and they look like it on TV because that disproves everything they're saying. If they seem like very intelligent, rational human beings, then we'd all be sitting there going, well, is it or what? I don't know. <laughs> you know? It's like the whole alien thing though, isn't it? Because everybody who talks about aliens on the telly talks like this and they all go home and they just drink like so many beers, but then they go back out and they see aliens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but there are there are British people who have seen, said they've seen aliens as well. I mean, I've seen some fairly convincing British. People and they talk like, like talk like this, like the farmers. <laughs> you just don't care who you offend today. Do you? No. <laughs> but the, yeah, I mean, the the conspiracy theorists, whether they're flat earthers or or the alien people, or even us with the zombies. I mean, it's it. The, I, I do understand how you can get yourself into that mode because if you talk about something long enough, if you hang around with people who believe in those same things as you, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? You, you know, I say to you, I, I'm starting to feel like it's a conspiracy. You say it's starting to feel like a conspiracy um, and you go round and round in circles. So I do understand the logic of it. Um, I, Not when there's undeniable proof that th- something isn't what they say it is. Yeah. I, <laughs> my logic is with the flat earth thing. Well, what's on the bottom? Yeah. What's on the bottom of it then? Because if you were on the bottom, then all the blood would rush to your head and you'd die. So but if if you got a flat earth, what's on the bottom? There's got to be something holding on the bottom, right? <laughs> it makes no sense. And why is everything else in the world, in the universe, a sphere? Unless they're all not spheres and they're all flat, in which case they're all facing the same way, which is really yeah. weird. <laughs> well, didn't you hear the story about the they found the earth? Um, sorry, the moon isn't in our. Um, well, uh, uh, they, the scientists recently discovered that the atmosphere is actually a lot bigger than what we realised. So it actually goes out a lot further into space. Yes, yeah, so they recently discovered that the moon is inside the Earth's atmosphere, where previously they thought it was outside. Yes, yeah, so, because the atmosphere is a lot bigger. So then all the flat earthers have come out and gone, ha, huh, we told you you uh, the Earth was flat and that, you know, the moon landings were fake mm. and all of this, because how did you not know before that the atmosphere... Yes. Wasn't bigger than that. I th- yeah, because the atmosphere is actually far more complex than we realised because there's actually a lot more layers yes. to it and it goes a lot further yes. into space. But um... And now as, as we're progressing scientifically, we can now see mm. things that we couldn't see before, like back in the, was it the 50s when the moon landing happened? Yeah, the yeah, 60s. 60s. Um, yeah, so it, it, it just, conspiracies are, are, are an incredible thing. But, we, you know, let's be honest, we've just started our own with zombie apocalypses, so we can't really, yeah. we're, we're not really ones to But no, I, I mean, I, I don't deep down think that a zombie apocalypse is ever going to happen. Button. But if it does, we'll be ready. If it does, yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've read a lot of shit on it. Yeah. So, yeah, and, I'll and be ready. Is, if it's not a zombie apocalypse, it could still be, you know, many, many other emergencies that where, where these same principles are useful. So, exactly. Uh, exactly. Right. Okay. So that's the end of episode one. Um, before we go, I think we need to just remind our listeners that we're still alive. Hi. Hello. Yeah, just, just about. Yeah. The voice is now going. The, Bex's voice is going, so I'll be quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right what have we got to remind you uh obviously check out the facebook group it's good mornings on park there's a page and a group uh the group is obviously where the group it... says good mornings on park group. group yes we've, we've actually established which one people still get that confused though. they still do um and then um we're doing a meetup in march um which is in london which will be coincided with walker stalker con so mm-hmm. uh bex and i will be uh at a pub to yet to be decided but if you go to the group you can see all the details there so if you're going to walker stalker um which is at excel center in march um you can obviously come and have a drink we'll be somewhere us. in canning town canning town isn't it bruv so canning town that's where i'm staying in canning town that's, that's proper rough that is mate um is it <laughs> yeah we used to be it's posh now it's all, it's all <laughs> i was gonna say i have no fucking clue where it's it is very gentrified so you, you go around the corner there's people talking like this isn't it mate you better get out of my fucking way and then you walk yeah. around there and they're like hello my name's ollie um, it's Ollie and I have a PhD in human sciences yes you have both and they live side by side not you know not in perfect harmony but they, they live side by side um, so oh, yeah. that's Canning Town now anyway so if you're coming to XL um, Walker Stalker in March you're more than welcome to join the Facebook group and see where we're going to be um, and come and have a pint with us um, yeah. and then later in the year we'll give you more details on this when tickets are available there's GMZ Live which is our live show which will be in Manchester Jim Beck's ne- neck of the woods and we'll have obviously the usual suspects there you know Peter McKinnon and the Dead Town team we'll have uh, Ricky Flea 
Lee, uh, Claire C. Riley, uh, David McCluskey. Um, we're going to sort of team up with people like All Things Zombie, the Facebook group and stuff. So see if we can get, you know, some of the, the Americans over. So, um, yeah, that's going to be cool as well. Um, we've got no books coming out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that this year. Yeah, it's going to be really good. It's going to be a lot bigger than last year. Um, we've got no books coming out as yet. But if anything changes, we'll let you know. Oh, while I'm here, Ricky Fleet's got a new book out this week, which I think is his latest in the Hellspawn series, uh, Requiem or something like that it's called. Um, yes. If you have a chance, go check that out. Um, have a look at that book. I know Ricky Fleet's been you know, really loyal to the podcast and all of our listeners really love everything that he's ever wrote. So if you haven't checked him out, go check it out. Mm, yes, Ricky Fleet. Ricky Fleet's Melly Feet. People won't know what that means now. No, I, that's the old school and, you know... The old school podcast. Old school podcast. That was like one of the first episodes, wasn't it? It was, Ricky Fleet's Many Feet, as one of our best guests. It was such a funny episode, though. It was, it was, because we basically called him Ricky Fleet episode for uh, Ricky Fleet smelly feet for the whole episode and yeah it was and forever since then yeah <laughs> okie dokie so um that's it thank you very much for listening thank you Bex for um you know putting your voice through this I know it's it's been a hard slog but you've managed to overcome it has so I have it's managed it's held up it's held its own yeah well it's croaky but it's still there well done you if you get any ill or I'll come round with that shovel and see what we can do thank you you're welcome right thank you very much <laughs> bye-bye bye, bye.